Amen. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Man, you just made me feel good. I think the last time you gave me an applause was 1937. Uh, good morning, everybody. We're glad to have you with us, and we're glad you're in the house of the Lord. Praise has been wonderful. We have been touched by the Lord, and of course, He's present. And what else do you want? The Lord is present with us. And uh, we brought a young man to uh, minister to us this morning. He's been part of our ministry for over 37 years. Can you believe that? I think he was about three years old when he started ministering. And uh, he's still doing it for the honor and the glory of the Lord. By the way, next, next Sunday, Father's Day, the guys don't know this. And so I'm, I'm springing up something uh, and, and surprise them a little bit. We're, we have started a little group. Start, they started by themselves. They're the Musica Nortenia type of music. And I know you don't like that. Well, go jump in the river. But you, you should be here next week. The, 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 the guy that plays the accordion is 10 years old. He's from our church. His family uh, play this Musica Norteña from the northern part of Mexico, southern part of Texas. It's the music that I was raised with. You don't want to miss out next Sunday to hear this little boy play his, play his, play his accordion. He is. He's a genius. He's incredible. And, of course, <clears throat> I'm going to sing with him. So... Um, that's going to complete the whole thing, man. I'm going to wear my boots, hallelujah, my old 10-gallon hat, and I'm going to speak from the side of a mouth sort of like this. It's going to be wonderful, praising God, hallelujah, praise God. So you want to be here. Father's Day, yeah, let's have a good time. And we have with us Roy de la Garza this morning, a guy that the Lord uses in marvelous ways, gifts of healings, and uh, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, quite a special combination for today, Pentecost Sunday. We're going to invite him to the pulpit. Come and bless us, Roy, with God, what God has given you. Have fun. Uh, make us laugh. Make us cry. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. God bless. I, when I found out it was Musica Norteña, I just had my wife clear our schedule. We, <laughs> uh, what a joy to be here this morning. There is such an anointing already in this place. When the Spirit of the Lord uh, is in praise and worship, whatever the team is doing, you're doing it right. Keep doing it. I know it's more than practice. I know you guys pray and surrender to the Lord in every, uh, uh, at every chance you get. And that's, that's what we feel, the anointing of God's Holy Spirit. Today is Pentecost Sunday, so I'm going to invite to our... Uh, f we have a 5 o'clock evening service. I mentioned it at the first service, Spanish service. And uh, this morning... I want those that have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit to receive it. And if you thought, well, a cousin of mine told me he sought for it for like 20 years before he got it. You don't have to look for it for 20 years for you to get it. In fact, this is going to be a day of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This morning and then tonight at the 5 o'clock service, I have already seen in the Spirit people just... Uh, being filled, baptized, saturated in the Holy Spirit uh, this morning. And, and if you understand the Spanish or this translation is there, uh, we're at 5 o'clock, don't miss that service this evening. There's going to be a real outpouring on the baptism of the Holy Spirit this, uh, this evening. And uh, you're invited. Praise the Lord. All right. I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm glad we're here. This is like home for us. So I'm going to ask you to open your Bible, stand with me, and we're going to read in the scripture. Um, you know what makes us different than a group, a club, is what happened a moment ago while we were praising God. God's presence shows up in the midst of his people. He promised to be where two or three are gathered, and of course, uh, there's a lot more than that this morning. And God's presence is so real when God's people begin to praise and worship him. And that's what makes us different. The anointing of God's Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going to leave you, but I'm going to pray the Father and He'll give you another comforter. John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17. And Jesus said, and I will pray the Father and He shall give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth Him not. Neither knoweth Him, but you know Him. For he dwells with you and shall be in you. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Our hearts are open. Our minds are open. We want to receive from your presence, from your hand, from your heart, Lord, this morning. 
Any who is not baptized in the Holy Spirit this morning, Lord, we open our lives and hearts to be filled. And those who have, Lord, refill us. Keep us as a fountain that's flowing with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tell somebody next to you, God is going to do something great in your life today. And you may be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. Now say it like you mean it. Before we uh, get into the word, I, I forgot to do this and then I'll get in trouble if I don't. I, I, we have some videos over in the back. They're a $10 gift each uh, or two for 20, believe it or not, or five for 40. I have these two dramas. This is called Hypnotize, the things that have people hypnotized. It's a drama that I produced for a Victory Outreach group in Northern California and this one called School of Hard Knocks. It's not real religious, but if you know somebody who's into hip hop, they'll want to see that one, School of Hard Knocks, the way it really is in school. And there's a portion where this girl who is about to kill her roommate or schoolmates uh, hears from God, has this amazing surrender to God, has this rap with God. It's amazing. Uh, teenagers just start weeping when they see that. It's, it, they, their hearts are broken down. And those are back there. Uh, I recommend this one if you like. Fast, down to earth. Quick messages. This one has 30 different sermons that are 90 seconds each. And uh, put it in your CD player on your way to work or the school. Hear a message every day. It's like a, an injection of faith for you uh, for that day. It's called One Minute uh, with Pastor Roy. All right. Now, the Holy Spirit is God's presence. When you feel the presence of God, you're actually feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's making himself real to you. He's a comforter, the Bible calls him. He's a helper. And if you live in him, he's going to reveal to you the will of God and other things. Discerning in the spirit is so important. People will come and they'll flat lie to you. And if you have discerning in the spirit, you can tell a lie when it comes at you. You can see the facades that the devil sets up in front of you and understand that this isn't an opportunity. This is a deviation to get me out of focus. So it's very important today, more than ever, that we be completely saturated with the power of the Holy Spirit. He will speak God's will to you. You don't have to, oh God, what do I do next? You'll speak to, he'll speak to you and you'll hear him. How many times have you read in the scriptures, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says or speaks to the church or speaks to you. You need to hear the Holy Spirit with your inner ear, not with this one. He doesn't always talk to this one. He can talk audibly and people say, well, I don't hear God speaking to me. He doesn't talk to me because my ears open and I'm not hearing. Well, you know, this is what you hear exaggerations with friends, lies, gossip and all kinds of stuff with the natural ears. But the natural ears don't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Your heart was meant to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit inside of your heart. Uh, Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep, which are all of us hear my voice i know them and they follow me so as his, the good shepherd he speaks to us in our inner ear and we as sheep <laughs> go along and he says okay my sheep hear my voice i know them they know me and i fo they follow me okay watch out for that hole okay watch out for that uh, stumbling stone and and the shepherd speaks and we as sheep hear and we obey we follow okay okay i'm going to go around that and there's another obstacle so we would avoid a lot of failures, disappointments, tumbles if we just as sheep hear his voice and follow. You can only hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you on the inside. Now, I know that some people say, ooh, that's flaky. That is so flaky that God's going to lead me. You want flaky? I'll give you flaky right now. John chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, John 3, 8, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. You don't know where it's coming from and where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. If you weren't sure that now you're led by the Holy Spirit and you're flaky, you're going to surely know now I'm flaky because it says, I'm like the wind. I don't know where it's going or where it's coming from. So are those that are led by the Spirit because the wind of God, one of the types of the Holy Spirit blows and, and, and directs you, it guides you. 
And He can guide you in all kinds of situations before making a wrong decision, before making a bad choice, uh, before signing on the dotted line. Uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. How many are sons of God? Well, we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Now, now somebody says, well, He doesn't lead me. He doesn't speak to me. The Bible doesn't say, uh, Jesus did not say, I will speak to some sheep and not to others. He said, my sheep hear my voice. He didn't say, I'll speak to them. My sheep hear. It's not a matter of Him speaking. It's a matter of us hearing His voice. He's always speaking. We're not always listening. We have our spiritual ears sometimes cluttered with fights that have not been resolved, sin that has not been repented, all kinds of issues in our head, and we're, we're up here instead of here, but He will lead you if you're a child of God. Let's talk about the marvelous Pentecostal experience, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some people are afraid to call it a baptism. Ooh, you can be filled, infilled, saturated, you know, uh, in the Holy Spirit. You know, Acts chapter 1, verse 5 says, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. It is a baptism. It's a baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it means, baptism means a complete immersion, to be completely submerged. You know what I learned about baptism was watching this little skinny, bless his heart preacher baptizing a uh, round woman, I don't want to embarrass anybody uh, or offend anybody, about three times his size, dunking her underwater. And after he said, baptism means complete immersion, none of this sprinkle, sprinkle stuff, you got to be immersed. And he said that, and about the third person he baptized was a very large, robust woman, and, and he, he had a helper there, and, and he dunked her under, and one of her arms floated up on the water like this. And when he did, he got a real nervous and he pushed that arm down. When he pushed that arm down, she rolled floating and the other arm came up. And he pushed that one down and then she rolled up again like this. And finally, he just took both hands and he said, help me. And pushed her all the way down. And then they had to struggle to get her back up again. <laughs> and he asked her to testify. He said, I almost went to heaven right now, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. And I saw that and I said, whoa, look, look at how he's struggling. And he says, I'm sorry, but you are, he said it this way, you ain't baptized if you ain't completely submerged or immersed in water. And you know, that's what it means. Jesus was not sprinkled on the head. John the Baptist dunked him in water. It says when he came up out of the water, the Bible says clearly that's when the dove landed upon him, and that's when the father spoke. But um, an immersion. Now here it says, you have been, uh, 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 it says, John baptized in water, you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So it is an actual immersion. You are completely submerged or immersed in the Holy Spirit. It's not a little touch from God. It is a complete immersion in the Holy Spirit. We need to be more than ever, as the day of the Lord approaches, as days are wicked around us, we need men and women who are completely immersed in the Holy Spirit. Their heart, their mind, their will, their decision-making mechanisms, everything about them is completely immersed. This baptism in the Holy Spirit is a gift of God. From the very beginning, God wanted to let everybody know, even those of us far off that weren't born yet, that it was for everyone. Peter, when he was preaching about it to the Jews in Acts chapter 2 and verse 39 said, For this promise is unto you and to your children, and here we come here, and to all that are afar off, even as many as are called, as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's everybody. People who weren't born yet. People who are afar off. That's us. This promise was given. Now, uh, those that are afar off, wow, that's us. He even thought about that. Here's how the Holy Spirit will move on us when He saturates us, when He baptizes us, or if we're immersed in His presence. Most of us think the Holy Spirit comes 
from up there down. And, and you know, we, we sing about it. I love the song we just sang, Spirit Break Out. Actually, that's more scriptural than, than coming down because we always think the Holy Spirit's going to come down. We even pray, come down, Holy Spirit, come down. Actually, He's not going to come down today. The Bible says He came down on the day of Pentecost. He didn't go back up, but if we scream loud enough, we'll convince Him to come down again. He came down on the day of Pentecost. It was the whole church or the body of Christ and those that were yet to be saved and those that were afar off. It was the church that was first saturated and baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it was a gift to the church. But when you invite Jesus into your life personally and get saved, you know what happens when you get saved? There's a, well, Jesus comes in my heart. Yes, but not by his body. His body, according to scripture, is at the right hand of the Father. So what actually how he comes into your heart is by his spirit. I've heard people say, when you get saved, he's with you, but he's not in you till you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's actually the other way around. When you say, Christ, come into my life, his spirit indwells you. You say, come and live in me. By his spirit, he lives in you. You now have, as Romans says, the spirit of Christ in you. You have the hope of glory. You have his presence. Uh, you, but you can't talk about salvation without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can't talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit without talking about salvation because it's the Spirit of God that indwells you, lives inside of you when you get saved. Now your spiritual thirst is filled. I think I have a picture of a glass up here. Let's put that one up there if we can find it, right? I think it's behind that brick wall right there somewhere. Let's see if we can find that, uh, Jesse, that glass that we have there um it, i i don't see it yet but it, it's there somewhere there it is yes you see the bible calls us vessels another modern word for vessel is glass you know second corinthians 4 7 this treasure we have in earthen vessels cl clay pots that's all we are uh, made of dust going back to dust but i put a glass there so we could see it uh even though we're earthen vessels made of clay well, there's junk inside of us like a glass. We come and we pour it out before the Lord. Forgive my sin, Lord. He, he takes us and empties us out, and then He cleans us on the inside. We call that being born again, salvation, renewal, a new life, whatever you want to call it. How many have experienced that? Isn't that an exciting step into your eternity? Yeah, but now Christ now lives in you. He dwells inside of you. He lives there to guide you, to, to live through you. Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the Spirit of Christ inside of you. Well, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what would happen with that glass? Go to the next picture. If we fill it up and fill it up and fill it up, go to the last picture and fill it up to the very brim, to the mouth of the glass. Well, what happens to it is it begins to pour out from the mouth and it begins to now saturate not just the inside, but it saturates the outside of the glass too. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit came upon them. First time the Holy Spirit descended on the day of Pentecost, it was dramatic. It came as tongues of cloven fire and, and, and landed upon them and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. But it was the same Spirit of Christ inside. It was just an overflow. So filled up. Of, has you ever been in God's presence so great that all of a sudden you, you just feel like you're going to explode? Like, like the Holy Spirit is going to literally break out of you. What's happening is that the same Spirit of Christ that you receive when you get saved that's inside of you is now filling you and filling you to the very brim until it starts to overflow and that overflow like in any glass saturates or baptizes from the inside out the whole cup your inside your outside in fact jesus put it this way in john 7 37 through 39 john 7 37 through 39 and through verse 39 says in the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried out saying, if any man thirst, and there he's talking to those who need salvation. If any man thirst, he said, let him come to me 
and drink. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord, that you fulfill our thirst with your very presence. If any man thirst, come to me. He also said that in John chapter 4 to the thirsty woman, the sinful woman at the well. He called it thirst, spiritual thirst. And I can fill that thirst. I can quench that desire inside of you. Talking about salvation here. He that is thirsty, come to me and drink. Now, verse 38, he jumps from talking to the thirsty to the believer, the person who already knows him, who is already a believer. He says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly, some versions say his innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. And then verse 39 explains it. But this, he spoke of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For at that time, the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus had not been yet glorified. Now we're living on this side of history of his glorification. He's already been glorified. He died, he rose from the dead, and he went on high, led captivity captive. He said when he did that, he was going to pray the Father to send another comforter, the Holy Spirit, which he did on the day of Pentecost. We live on this side. He's been glorified. But at that time, when he said, out of his innermost being, who? The believer shall flow this river of living water. Now at that time, the Holy Spirit hadn't been given. But we live in the days that the Holy Spirit has already been given. Somebody say amen to that. And lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord. You have already given the Spirit. He is given already. Now, if there's anybody asking for it, stop asking for it. You don't ask for something that's already given. I'm going to show you in just a moment how the scripture says we just lay hold of it. But, but it's, he's already given. The Spirit is given. But the way he moves is not from up there down, but from in here out. He's already in you. If you've saved, you're saved, you've accepted Christ, the Spirit of Christ dwells in you. I think, I love the way Paul said it. Uh, no, I don't live any longer. Now Christ lives in me. I'm crucified with Christ. So his presence, his spirit is in you. Now all that has to happen is that he saturate you from the inside out. That the stirring, that the fountain begin to flow from inside out of the mouth of your glass, which is your mouth, by the way. The Bible does say, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Why is it that that happens? People begin to speak in other tongues. Thirsty, receive salvation. And, and then all of a sudden, that experience happens where that Christ in me, the Holy Spirit, His presence begins to saturate, begins to flow, stir up inside of me. And from the inside of the glass, what's in there begins to pour out to the outside until there's a complete saturation. Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 says, They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. They began to speak in tongues. What is that tongue speaking thing about? I don't know. I, uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people love it. Others don't. But let me tell you, speaking in tongues is an exciting part of your Christian walk. There's reasons. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. 1 Corinthians 14 2 says... Uh, uh, um, because he that speaks an unknown tongue speaks not unto men but unto God no one understands him but in the spirit he speaks mysteries yeah he speaks mysteries in the spirit nobody understands it you know every once in a while I have to turn over my prayer to the spirit because I run out of words I speak English I speak Spanish and sometimes I just run out of words so I say Holy Spirit take over and in the spirit I begin to speak mysteries. That means mystery. It's mysterious to my head. I don't understand it. I don't understand what I'm praying in the Spirit, what I'm praying in tongues. It's, it's mystery to me, but not to God. You know what I love about no man understands it? Not even the devil understands tongues. You know, you can pr pray in English, pray in Spanish, but all of a sudden you start praying in tongues, and the devil says, oh, I don't understand this one. There he goes with that heavenly language. I don't understand that. You're preaching, you're, you're praying mysteries. It does, your understanding doesn't know what you're praying, but the Spirit is making intercession for you. It says this in Romans chapter 8, verse 26. We've got to put this one up. This is probably my favorite 
on praying in the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. This, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses or our infirmities. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Have you ever been there? Come on. Have you ever been, I don't know what to pray for. I don't know if this is God's will or not. I don't know what to, we don't know what we should pray as we ought, the King James says. But it says in the, what's the next line, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us huh? through wordless groans, through words that cannot be uttered or understood as the NIV says. Whoa! All of a sudden the Holy Spirit begins to intercede for you. I run out of words. I don't know what to say. I'm going to pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit intercedes with groanings which cannot be uttered, utterances that cannot be understood. And the Holy Spirit intercedes according to the will of God. It bothers the spiritual wickedness, the devil, because he himself doesn't understand those tongues. But your spirit is now praying in a heavenly language to God and no one else understands it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4 says, uh, He that speaketh in unknown tongues edifies himself, uh, but he who prophesies edifies the church. That's why, by the way, right now I'm, I'm doing this in English and not in tongues because it edifies you. You understand what's being said. But he who speaks in tongues edifies himself. It's another way to build you up. Edify means to build up. It builds you up in the area of your weakness. It builds you up in the area of not knowing how to pray. So it's okay to pray with your understanding and then pray in the Spirit. In fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15 says this, I will pray with the, understand, uh, with the Spirit and I will pray also uh, with my understanding. And then and the following line says, I will sing with my Spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. Now they had a problem back then in Corinthians. Everybody wanted to uh, only pray in tongues and sing in tongues. He says, no, no, there's two ways of doing. I will do it in the spirit, but also with my understanding. Today we have the opposite problem. People want to only want to do it with the understanding. And there's still two ways to do it. Two ways of praying with the understanding, with the intellect, words you understand, and in the spirit. Words that your mind doesn't understand, but that the spirit communicates directly to God. And there's two ways of singing. There's two ways of singing, singing with the understanding, the words that you understand, and then singing in the spirit, which is not understanding with your head, but letting your heart sing in the spirit. There, uh, there's two ways to do it. Somebody say amen. And if there's two ways of doing it, I want to do it both ways. Now, receiving a gift, when we come to receiving a gift, every principle of receiving is the same. Whether you're sick in your body and you need healing, whether you have not accepted Christ as your Savior and you want to receive the gift of salvation or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have to understand that these are gifts of God that are already provided, already paid for. The table is already set and we don't have to convince God, please give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. I've been ministering, um, I'm going to be 50 years in the ministry this year and um, when you said 30 pastor you were being very very kind or or you wanted to forget how many you've been in the ministry too because we're about the same I started very young and he impacted my life when I was a pre-teenager and he went down to uh, preach in Phoenix he was actually the Assembly of God district youth president wow yeah back then and and so and all of these years, I've seen some hairy stuff in Pentecostal circles and charismatic circles. Oh my God, no wonder some churches want to throw out the baby with the bathwater and say, we don't want any of that. It's a lot easier just we close the door on the whole thing. You know, they'll, first of all, people in receiving this baptism of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> there's only three things that keep it away from you. Number one is sin. Sin, because he's a Holy Spirit. But then when you got saved, you were already forgiven. You are justified. If there's something that's clogging up your plumbing inside from the Holy Spirit moving, just repent of it. 
you know, and don't hide it, uh, ignore it, make it go away, or by thinking, not thinking about it, or God can't see it because it's something I do on Fridays, not on Sundays. He's only aware of my Sundays. You know, just repent of it. You are already forgiven. Uh, being righteous is not being perfect. Being righteous is a gift. Righteousness is God's gift to you because of what Jesus did on Calvary. So sin uh, shouldn't any longer uh, have its hold on you. And, and if, it, if there's any area of your life that needs to be repented of, just repent of it. Get rid of it. Say, Lord, I surrender this to you and the same blood of Jesus that was enough to save me a year ago, forgive my sin five years ago or yesterday is the same one that will forgive me today and in my future because I'm saved by your grace through faith. Yeah, and, and if you don't receive the inflow of the Holy Spirit, what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that submersion that starts inside of you and just bubbles up all over you, and if you wait too long, I think we read the scripture says, you will receive the Holy Ghost and not many days hence. Some people may wait many years hence. I don't know why, but they think it's just a hard thing to get. And the early Pentecostal church made it a hard, impossible thing to get. Oh my gosh, that and being worthy to take communion were the two difficult things in the old Pentecostal church. I'm serious, when it came to communion time, the pastor would uh, preach to us. I was raised in a church where he'd preach to us, saying, uh, telling us for a half hour how we weren't worthy to take it. And then he'd say, okay, come up, those who are worthy to take it. And only him and this little viejita who was in her 80s would go up and take it. And one Sunday, she didn't even go up. And I was, <laughs> what did she do? You know, I'm wondering. So... People made the baptism of the Holy Spirit impossible to get. You got to scream. You have to shout. I was at meetings where they, people were hitting, knocking people on the head with their Bibles, receive it, you know, pouring oil all over them and kicking the Holy Ghost into them, shaking them until they spoke in tongues whether they wanted to or not, you know, uh, shaking demons out of them. I don't know. Some of this stuff is man-made. It's not God's plan. Yeah, you're going to shake sometimes. You're going to roll. You're going to dance. You're going to laugh. You're going to cry. Those are emotions. Those are, are, are subjective. They happen to different ways to different people. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is like salvation. It's a gift. And, but the salvation is a gift to the non-believer. He that believeth, Jesus says, out of his innermost belly shall flow. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a gift to the believers. It's a gift to you. You don't have to work for it. You can't possibly earn it. It was given not because we deserve the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the Spirit was given to us because we need Him. We need to be completely saturated with that power of the Holy Spirit, that baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's amazing. Uh, anything that's given already, was given on the day of Pentecost, descended on the day of Pentecost. He is here and with us, waiting for us, to receive the table is set come and get it another thing that keeps in the way is pride ego pride i'm not talking about being proud of doing a good job i'm talking about that ego pride the bible says god resisteth the proud but gives grace to the humble sometimes that little seed of pride is inside and 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 that fills our heart and 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 as uh, ruth graham said the only person who can't be filled with God's Spirit is the one that's already full of himself. If you're full of yourself, there's no room to completely let God's Spirit take over. So as you come and you say, God, here I am. You know that ego pride thing. I remember one time praying for, uh, uh, on a baptism of the Holy Spirit service, this woman, and it was in the late 70s, big bouffant hairdos were used a lot and, and moose was in. And they would, women would moose their hair up like this high, seriously. And I remember coming to pray for, at the altar and there was uh, 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 people receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, beginning to speak in other tongues, blah, 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 speaking in other tongues. And then uh, as I got close to her, uh, the Holy Spirit said, just pray with her. I got closer. I said, do you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit? She said, yes, I do. But I don't know why I can't receive it. Yes, I do, she said. 
my husband's not here, but he'll tell you I'm a very prideful person. I said, well, let's pray that you get just saturated with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, I want you to understand what she was like. I, I had just met her, but her face was perfect. She had like a professional makeup done and her hair was up and moose. And as I got close to her, the aura of expensive perfume hit me. And, and uh, it wasn't because of that. It was just that when she said, I think I'm very prideful. I said, you know what? Raise your hands. And she wouldn't raise them. I said, raise your hands. Do I have to? I said, yes. I do? I said, yes. Okay. She raises her hands. Her beautifully long manicured nails almost hit the ceiling of the church. <laughs> and as her hands were up, I said, okay, now, now here's an exercise in letting go of some of that ego and pride. I said, praise the Lord. Okay. Praise Him. Okay. With your mouth open. I said, I, I can't believe this. I said, um, out loud. What do I say? Start with hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah. Again. Hallelujah. Again. Hallelujah! 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 All of a sudden, by the seventh time, I heard a different Hallelujah! I looked. Her hands were up. Black tears were rolling down her face. Hallelujah! She just had to let the Spirit break out some of that ego and pride because she had always said to her husband, I will never go crazy in church. That's fanatic. I like to see other people go crazy, but that's not for me. And when her hands are up, the black tears are rolling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is it. I even forgot about the moose on her hair. I just laid hands on her head. Crack. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, receive it. She jumped up from her knees to her feet. And started speaking in other tongues, blah, 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 running from one side of the altar to the other, jumping and running, and blah, 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 blah. her hair that, like this was down to the side. <laughs> one of her eyelashes was like this, sideways. It was literally sideways. And black tears. Blah, 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 blah. Talk about pride being gone. <laughs> Somebody said to her husband, uh, Look at your wife. Uh, that's not my wife. No, <laughs> she wouldn't do that. You know, when you're ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you don't care if you get it right out here on Fairview or on downtown Santa Ana where somebody can see you. It doesn't matter. And when it does matter, then that has to be broken down. When how I look matters has to be broken down. Now, is, is everybody going to shout and scream and cry and roll and dance? No, no. There are different reactions. If I take seven of you right now, from different walks of life and say seven of you get up here right now one two three four five six seven and stick your right hand out and you all stick your hand out and I pull out a needle and I stab each one stab 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 blood comes out of everyone as evidence that they were stabbed somebody doesn't bleed this one did not get stabbed okay now he's stabbed the evidence is there now what happens next Different reactions. One to look at the blood, say, oh, blood, ah, and he starts to tremble. Another looks at it and says, blood, and he faints. <laughs> Another one looks at blood and he starts to cry. <laughs> Another says, blood, and he starts to laugh. <laughs> now, those are different reactions to the same thing. Do you understand that? That's why. When the power of the Holy Spirit saturates somebody from the inside out, yes, there's going to be a reaction, but it's not all going to be the same. And we can't judge it on the external. It's what's happening on the inside. That Holy Spirit has bubbled up inside like a river, as Jesus said, or like a fountain, as he called it once. And it's saturating from the inside out. Yes, something's going to happen. Don't anybody say, well, that's just nothing but emotion. It's all emotion. That's what it is. That's not true. You know, the Bible says in the Old Testament, Mount Sinai, a mountain, shook in God's presence. And why did that mountain shake? It was a very emotional mountain. 
No. And even the prison, when, when uh, Paul and Silas sang in there and God's presence descended in that place, the Bible says that the prison shook from the foundation and the foundation was made of stone. Yeah, but it was a very unstable emotional stone, wasn't it? That's why it shook. If a rock and a mountain shook in God's presence, can you imagine what's going to happen to a body that does have emotion? To a life like ours that is subject to weep and to cry and to get excited and to dance and to leap or to fall or to cry or something. Something's going to happen, but that's not how we judge it. This one got it because he fell. That one got it because he fell. This one did not fall, didn't get it. That one... The evidence will be the same. When you are saturated on the inside, it comes out of that tongue, the mouth of the cup. It comes out. And God created that. That's why people speak in other tongues. Because you're so filled, it comes, the Bible says, out of that abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We talked about some of the reasons for speaking in tongues to edify you. It's another way of praising and singing. It's another way of praying. But how powerful it is when something happens to that body, something happens. Now it's not just speaking in tongues. The fruit of the Spirit will take over in your life. You will be a different person from the inside out. It began when Christ in you, the hope of glory, dwelt inside you. But now that He has permeated every part of your existence, He has saturated you from the inside out, that experience is going to transform you like nothing else you'll find a great authority of God operating through your life. And, and when you receive that baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is a new power inside of you. Do I need it to get to heaven? You need salvation to get to heaven. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is to help you make it through earth with power, with strength, to work the works of God, to, to be available to God, to discern in the Spirit, to operate the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your life, to edify you in areas of weakness. And this is the day for you to receive that gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life. I was in a city that I go to once a year, Matamoros, Tamaulipas in Mexico, and then Brownsville, Texas, and once a year. This is the only year I'm not going uh, that direction, but every year I do. And one of the nights... We had a powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit. 212 people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit for the first time. And, and here's, here's, here's something key. The third thing that keeps you from receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is believing it's too hard to get. Faith works. If you think it's not for me, I don't deserve it, I can't get it. Somebody said, how long you look for it? Ten years. Whoa. How long did you seek the baptism? 20 years, <gasps> oh, 10 years, 20 years. How long did you seek the Holy Ghost? One year. Is that all? Now, now one year seems like a short time. Just one year. Yeah, but I was screaming at the top of my lungs till five in the morning every day, smoke coming out of my ears, and then I got it. I think I'll wait 10 and 20 years like this group over here. That's No, you don't have to do that. If you're saved, Christ lives in you. Say, Lord, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want to be saturated from the inside out. I want to surrender completely, Lord, that you would take over every part of my existence. You know, there'll be a new strength for you. There will be new authority. The gifts will operate in your life. They're not just meant for a chosen few. They're meant for every member of the body of Christ. You'll know where you're supposed to function. I believe this morning... There are some of you that are ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to make an altar call just as I have all over the world for salvation for those who need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, somebody, how do I speak tongues? Don't make it tough. Don't worry about it. The devil come over here and say, that's not the Holy Spirit. That's you talking in tongues. If, that, if he says that, you know what you tell him? Of course it's me talking in tongues. Trust me, I'm a ventriloquist. I can make puppets talk. Some of my videos show that. Some of you have seen me do that. Maybe those have been in Temple Calvario a long time. That's not the way you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're not just moving our mouth and, and God is talking through us or some angel says, open your mouth, I'm going to wiggle your tongue. That's not how it happens. The Bible says, they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. It's your tongue. 
It's your lips, your articulators, your voice. You're just going to begin to speak in other tongues. As He fills you all the way to the brim, you're going to begin to speak and then say it. Somebody says, well, that doesn't sound like Him when He talks in tongues. Or somebody looking at you, well, you don't speak in tongues like me. Well, who are you, the Holy Spirit? The Bible says, I speak in tongues as the Spirit give utterance. It may sound like gibberish. It may sound like nothing. But those are your tongues. And like a baby learning to talk in the Spirit too, you're going to develop that gift of speaking in other tongues to edify you. And then sometimes uh, uh, some of those will be diverse tongues or different tongues that will have an interpretation. Otherwise, they're tongues to edify you, to build you up. And it's, it's for you. Very simple. I've heard this, Pastor, that you have to be careful when you want the Holy Spirit to indwell you because you might get a demon. I've heard people say that. I'm just afraid of getting, you know, too much into it because I heard you might get a demon. Now, does that sound like God? You come up to say, God, I want the Holy Spirit. I says, no, mijo, I think I'm going to give you a demon. <laughs> that doesn't sound like God. Didn't Jesus say in Luke 11, 11, if a father being evil knows how to give good gifts to his children, if he asks you bread, you're not going to give him a stone. If he asks for a fish, you're not going to give him a scorpion. If, uh, if he asks for an egg, a scorpion. No, you, uh, a father gives good gifts to his children. How much more the father will give the Holy Spirit? It says literally to them that ask. You come without fear in your heart that some demon's going to, if you're looking for a demon, you're not, don't look for it here. I don't have to tell some of you, you know where to find that, but not here. God's not going to give you a scorpion for an egg or a stone for a fish. You're going to say, God, I want the indwelling of the Holy Spirit powerfully in my life and watch what's going to happen. I'm going to ask the worshipers to come forward. There was such a precious anointing as they ministered. And those that are here, I want you to come because nothing sets an atmosphere for the power of the Holy Spirit to pour out upon people's lives to rise up inside of you and bubble forth like a river than good anointed worship. And, and I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Everyone stand to your feet with me. I'm going to make an invitation up here. And you know, fear, first of all, fear not. Don't be afraid. This is a, a gift of God like salvation is when we were thirsty, like healing is by His stripes. The, God gives His Spirit, the Bible says, without measure. We put the measure, but let's take the limits off this morning and say, God, I want from the inside out, saturate me. Let it bubble up and rise up inside of me, God. The power of your Holy Spirit. First, before inviting those who need the baptism, I need to ask if there's anyone here who hasn't surrendered their life to Christ first. Surrendering your life to Jesus, that means opening your heart, inviting Him to come into your life. Forgive every sin. If there's someone who needs to accept Jesus Christ as Savior this morning, I'm going to invite you first to come. Raise your hand and say, Pastor Roy, I want to receive the gift of salvation this morning. Or I need to reconnect my life with God. Raise your hand. Someone? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, I'm going to reserve this altar right now for men and women who say, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, forget, forget how your mama, your grandma, your grandpa, your friend received it. There may be falling, jumping, rolling, crying, sitting still. I don't know. But I know one thing that's going to happen. It's gonna, he's going to rise up inside of you, break through, and you're going to begin to praise Him in other tongues. In fact, I want to agree with you. I'm going to ask those who help at the altar to lay hands on someone. And, and you just let yourself be flooded with the Holy Spirit. Those who want the baptism of the Holy Spirit today, day of Pentecost 2014, get up here right now. Stand before this altar. Just stand. I want you to lift your hands and let's get into one mind, one accord, one spirit as they did on the day of Pentecost. And the Bible says such a great outpouring happened. And an outpouring is here this morning. And I'm going to ask that some who are already baptized in the Holy Spirit, who regularly worship and praise or sing in other tongues, I need you up here too to help me so you can pray in the Spirit. Just come and pray in the Spirit. For the, We've prayed in the understanding. We want to pray in the Spirit for a moment right now. Just come and fill this place with tongues. Let's pray in the Spirit. 
Let's worship in the spirit to set an atmosphere. Thank you, Lord. Lead us in something, my brother, as, as we come. Someone else who needs to come, just come. Come and receive. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I want you to begin to praise and praise him as you're there. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This gift is for you. Praise him. Praise him. Give him a voice out loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, let this praise erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching us. The sound of heaven touching us. Our Father, all of heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching me. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead, praise Him. Hallelujah. Those who can praise Him in other tongues, a moment. Hallelujah. We want to see your name. We want to see heaven. We want to see heaven come upon us. Oh, my Lord, my God, heaven come on down. Holy is your. presence of the Lord is here so rich those who are here to receive it I want you to, with your hands up just praise him out loud hallelujah bless you Lord whatever comes out praise you Lord hallelujah come on give him a voice give him a voice as you're praising him and worshiping him and someone is laying hands on you that's the moment to release that and praise him in other tongues anyone else who wishes to come come now or right where you are, praise Him and worship Him in the Spirit for a moment. Those who are already baptized in the Holy Spirit, come on, praise Him a moment in the Spirit. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. 